and welcome to the bot box. Get your seat belts on, dear viewers, because we're going to be here for a while. However, King Boxing is one of the easiest duo bots I've ever had to describe on the show. It is a silver coloured invitable box armed with two lifting spikes and had exposed wheels. It made its debut in series 2 of Robot Wars, landing in Hitai, where of course it had to face the gauntlet. King Buxton took a meandering route to the middle lane with the ramps in the sphere and carried on meandering, falling off the ramp in the process. Matilda came to attack, but King Buxton pushed past Matilda, only to get pinned by another house robot to kill a lot. That's not crickets, okay? King Buxton never quite got free, but got 10.6 metres along the course and got through to the trails, which that week was Joust versus Matilda. King Buxton nearly fell off the ramp, but stayed on to have a pushing war with Matilda, one that was very much obscured by some pyrotechnics. King Buxton got pushed off, but it did make 6.5 metres, so it went through to have a fight against track lifter Robodoc. King Buxton went to Robodoc's sides early on and pushed Robodoc to Matilda, shunt and dead metal also rocking up, but Robodoc escaped and pushed King Buxton well, King Buxton pushed his way out of there and proceeded to ram Robodoc several times. Until just as time was running out, Robodoc nearly drove into the pit. Matilda and King Buxton failed to get Robodoc in the pit, but did introduce Robodoc to some fire. The judges were called in. They ruled in favour of King Buxton. Next up in the heat final was another rammer lifter, All Talk. Two bots danced around each other early on before a pushing war ensued, when decisively by King Buxton when it pushed All Talk to the edge of the pit. So Killlot pushed All Talk the rest of the way in. So that sent King Buxton to the series semi finals, where it had to face the gauntlet all over again. King Buxton took the middle route, which this time had a brick wall, pits, and a sphere. Without meandering, King Buxton went straight through the wall, pushed the sphere, whilst Shunt drove into a pit, bent one of Matilda's tusks, and made the end zone. So it was time for the pinball trial, because of course King Buxton got through. King Buxton knocked over a bunch of barrels and bricks, taking one of the bricks on the ride over the ramp, before dropping the brick off and going the other way down the ramp to get away from a kilowatt. King Buxton knocked more barrels and bricks, but got covered, cornered by the bricks and secure a lot. And, but he escaped to try a 50 point target. The key word here is try. They didn't get close enough to succeed, Matilda made sure of that. Still, they scored 165 points and did enough to get a fight against the top seeds and defending champions. Saw wielding wedge bot Rosebok. King Buxton went for Roadblock sides early on and ran over Roadblock's front end, but after a hit from Roadblock, King Buxton ended up with a house robots. King Buxton escaped and a pushing war ensued, which was quickly ended when King Buxton sent the, sent the defending champions to the house robots. Roadblock too escaped. King Buxton drove over Roadblock to end one pushing war, but another followed and King Buxton caught fire. Sent to the spikes, King Buxton couldn't move anymore. King Buxton returned for series three with a vertical spinny thing and I almost knew everything. They landed in Heat J and drew Drawbot Eric, a kind of good lift and grab. King Buxton went for Eric's sides early on before backing off and attacking the front. Eric lifted King Buxton. King Buxton got away though and nudged Eric some more but lost the end of a lifting spike. King Buxton then tried to pit Eric but missed and ended up with two wheels over the edge of the pit. Eric pushed King Buxton to try and get the, them the rest of the way in but all that did was allow King Buxton to wriggle free and Eric ended up in the pit. And breathe, King Buxton too. That was a narrow squeak. Next up was Axbot Lifter 
Weldor. King Buxton pushed Weldor around, though King Buxton came close to taking a pee back ride on Weldor and got axed. Weldor missed with another axe blow. King Buxton then got one of its spikes underneath Weldor's wheel guards, allowing King Buxton to carry Weldor around wherever it liked. Which was going to be the pit, but they couldn't quite get there, so released Weldor by an arena wall and rammed it. Weldor didn't and couldn't escape, but its weapon still worked and it lifted King Buxton, which now had a bent spike, before the house robots came in. King Buxton took on Sir Killot and shunt. Sir Killot pitted Weldor, minus its axe, which Sir Killot cut off. So that put King Buxton through to the fi- the heat final, where they faced Tracked Spikebot 101, the successor of Robodoc, and they wanted revenge. Can you say popcorn match? I don't have any popcorn here, so... Soundless invisible popcorn. 101 escaped and pushed... Oh, so two of us danced around each other early on before 101 pushed King Buxton across the arena. 101 then ran over King Buxton before King Buxton sent 101 to the Matilda. 101 escaped and pushed King Buxton around, hitting them with their spike before leaving King Buxton by a flame pit. King Buxton took a little while to get moving again, but when it did, 101 sent them into a wall with a spike. 101 sent King Buxton to dead metal, which seemed to wake King Buxton up. It escaped and managed to push 101. A pushing war ensued, ended when King Buxton ended up with Shunt and got axed. It escaped get pushed by 101 again. As time ran out on the pipe, both bots slowed down, 101 still pushing, but King Buxton was leaking ominous smoke due to fire. The judges were called in. They ruled in favour of 101. King Buxton also had a remote control issue during the fight they broke one of the sticks. Whoops. So, King Buxton returned for series 4 as King B3, now see-through, and with new team members and new internals as well. And they were now seeded, 17th. They landed in Heat A and drew Axelbot, well, kind of well, I say Axelbot, the Axel was a drum. Attila the drum and Medusa 2000, a lifter. Just a side note, this episode will be the last time I talk about any fights from Series 4 Heat A. There is still Firestorm's sumo bottle battle to talk about, but that won't be until Firestorm's slip comes out of the box. Not until Wimbledon. After Wimbledon, please, Tyke. Anyway, to battle. King B3 went after Medusa 2000 at once, pushing the boss around, the lifter bot around for a bit and driving over them. Twice. King B3's next target was Attila the Drum, whose tassels were on fire. Okay, and the 17th seed sent them on a tour of the arena. Oh, how nice. This included introducing Attila the Drum to Sergeant Bash, who set more of Attila's decorations on fire, and were pushing for releasing Attila the Drum. As time ran out and the judges were called in, King B once again slowed down. King B3 went through, so did Medusa 2000. Next up was Flipper Atomic. King B3 had already had a small fire, which is not good. The two bots danced around each other early on before a pushing war ensued, ended when Atomic flicked the 17th seeds away. A second pushing war ended when Atomic flicked King B3 into dead metal. King B escaped though and pushed Atomic into a wall before Atomic started to chase King B3 and flip it over. Driving into a wall probably didn't help King B3's cause either. The two ended up dangerously close to Sir Killot. Atomic drove into a wall and lost its flipper which is bad, but Atomic could still push King B3 into a wall. King B3, meanwhile, only had two working wheels, wasn't moving, and was leaking ominous smoke again. 
So, Sakil so picking B3 up and pitted it. Time for a pinball interlude. King B3 went for the barrels first, knocking over a bunch before hitting a 50 points target after tangling with Sergeant Bash to hit that target. King B3 next hit the multi ball release, argued with house robots, went through the car door, hit another 50 point target but got stuck in reverse at the end. Still, got 225 points and came fourth overall, which is pretty good. Next up was the Tag Team Terror, where King B3 teamed up with, of course, 101. <laughs> this was a friendly rivalry, they had mutual respect. First up for them was Lifter Invertebrate and Axbot Lifter Exterminator 2. Exterminator 2 going for their axe. King B3 and Invertebrate were first out, bumping into each other. And damage was done to one of the robots, though it's hard to tell what had been done. <laughs> Both bots tagged their respective partners in a pushing war ensued, one that 101 was winning, but it was taking axe blows from Exterminator 2. 101 doesn't do axes, it got knocked out of series 4 by 1. 101 pushed Exterminator 2 towards Sergeant Bash and into the ref bot before King B3 rocks up to get into a pushing war. And King B3 took Axe Blows too. Meanwhile, 101 was fighting a vertebrate, and I'm pretty sure we can bid the rules farewell. In fact, I think I actually forgot to bring the rules with me. Oh well, um, hang on. Invisible copy. It's been a tough week. Anyway, Dead Metal tried to drag 101 away, but 101 attacked both Exterminator 2 and Invertebrate at the same time. King B3 poked 101 before their focus turned to Exterminator as Invertebrate wasn't moving. King B3 did hit 101 though. They are rivals, remember. Jonathan, the commentator. I think they were playing up the rivalry in the pits. King B3 then pushed Exterminator into a wall before ending up with Sergeant Bash. King B3 escaped after getting hit by 101. And hit 101 one more time as time ran out and the judges were called in. They ruled in favour of 101 and King B3, sending them through to the final to face. Flipper, Firestorm 2, and Chainsaw Wielder, Scorpion. King B3 and Scorpion went out first, and after an, in an initial Scorpion attack, King B3 pushed Scorpion around. 101 went out to have a go at Scorpion, so King B3 returned to its part of the arena, but Firestorm 2 went out to help Scorpion. 101 sent Scorpion to Dead Metal. Meanwhile, King B3 and Firestorm 2 went out. I need more copies of the rules. Well, more rules props. Um, 101 went after Firestorm 2, King B3 joining in. Then Firestorm 2 stopped, so 101 and King B3 fought each other. <laughs> of course. Until Scorpion got released. King B3 and 101 went after Scorpion. Scorpion didn't stand a chance. So the house robots then went for 101 and King B3, but they still won the tag team terror tournament. And now we have to navigate to Robot Wars Extreme, where King B3 had a new name, King B Power Works. I, I'd say pray for me when it comes to navigating Robot Wars Extreme. But I think we're past that point. I've already done the navigating. Anyway, it's time for more Tag Team Terror. Of course, King B Power Works teamed up with 101 and faced very Irish lifter Deatoire and another lifter in Mega Morgue. 101 and Mega Morgue were out first and the two took a while to come to blows, but 
once they did, a pushing war ensued, in which Megan Moore got spiked. Both bots attacked their respective partners before King B Power Works started pushing Deodoro around, separating it from the inflatable sheep that were attached to Deodoro. It's a Megan Moore thing, the sheep. Anyway, a pushing war ensued between King Bee Powerworks and Deer to Art with a brief break so King Bee Powerworks could send an inflatable sheep flying with the spinny thing. Deer to Art eventually tagged Megamorg, but by then it was on fire. It's a Deer to Art thing, the fire. Anyway, all the robots came out. After a Deer to Art attack, all King Bee Powerworks could do was spin. And once Deatar turned 101 over, it became clear that one of 101's tracks was kaput. Deatar was definitely the most valuable player here. Anyway, time ran out and the judges were called in. They ruled in favour of Mega Morgan Deatar. Cue questions about whose fault the loss was and the seeds sown for a vengeance battle, which I will get to as soon as we've dealt with King B. Powerworks' wildcard warriors fight against Crusher Lifted Draven. Yes, you heard me right, you boot fans. Draven. It was in the original series. The two bots danced around each other early on, but Draven managed to push King B Powerworks. It kept trying to catch King B Powerworks to get a crush on it, but King B Powerworks just kept slipping away. Draven got King B Powerworks into a corner, but King B Powerworks managed to escape to hit Draven's sides, but he's getting grabbed by Draven again. This is a good thing, not getting caught by another robot. King B Powerworks then managed to pick Draven up, open the pit, using Draven to do so, and dropped Draven into the pit. Now we can deal with that vengeance battle against 101. The two robots bumped into each other early on before King B Powerworks gave 101 a slow spin. King B Powerworks drove over 101, but the track bot pushed King B Powerworks into a wall. King B Powerworks escaped them. 101 introduced King B Powerworks to more walls and a corner where Shunt went after King B Powerworks and axed it. Sergeant Bash showed up too. 101 pushed Sergeant Bash. King B Powerworks started spinning, and after another push from 101, King B Powerworks basically lost all control. Until Sergeant Bash and Shunt pinned King B Powerworks into a corner that King B Powerworks had driven into, basically was just bouncing off the walls. Essentially. The pit was opened, and in went King B Powerworks. And Sergeant Bash. King B Powerworks team outright said that 101 was the better bot. So, with the grudge match settled, on to a mayhem battle against Rama Tornado and Axebot, the Steel Avenger. Tornado and King B Powerworks' team had a trash talk battle about the whole ramming thing and how similar they were and who, who did what first. Um, King B Powerworks hit the Steel Avenger early on before pushing in Tornado into the Axe Bot's side. The Steel Avenger nudged King B Powerworks before going out of focus until Tornado caught up with it anyway. Then King B Powerworks pushed Tornado, which had stopped working or stopped moving stopped working as well, it wasn't doing anything. So the Seal Avenger went for King B Powerworks, but both are out of focus as Tornado was being counted out. The Seal Avenger opened the pit and King B Powerworks tried to shove Tornado into the pit, but the Seal Avenger hit King B Powerworks and it lost a wheel. As time ran out on the battle, the Seal Avenger kept nudging and trying to axe King B Powerworks, but as the judges were called in, ran into Matilda, who was just outside the corner patrol zone. So when the judges were making their decision, the Matilda attack was not into con- 
did not come into consideration. It's essentially, they were ruling up to the point where Matilda attacked, which is right at the end of the fight, practically. It's like less than a second away from cease being called. The judges ruled in favour of the Steel Avenger. Can the powerworks his team were just happy to outlast Tornado. So now we're on series five, where King B Powerworks landed in Heat F, unseeded, and drew for the Chronic Two. Chronic Two flipped King B Powerworks early on, not that it did anything you know, invertible, and kept trying with the flipper. But King B Powerworks pushed Chronic Two into a wall, and then Sergeant Bash. Chronic Two even gained some holes, but escaped only for King B Powerworks to impale Chronic Two again. King B Powerworks sent. Chronic 2 to Sergeant Bash, Shunt separated Chronic 2 and King B Powerworks. As time ran out and the judges were called in, King B Powerworks prodded Chronic 2 near a flame pit, and Chronic 2's decorative sp spines were on fire. The judges ruled in favour of King B Powerworks. Next up was the 11th seeded Axe Spot Dominator 2. The, the, this is the same Axe Spot that beat 101 in Series 4. Dominator 2 axed King B Powerworks early on, but King B Powerworks escaped. The 11th seeds and shunt the house robot. That's who King B Powerworks escaped from. In fact, King B Powerworks ended up on the run from Dominator 2, but the 11th seeds caught them and axed them repeatedly. King B Powerworks even got spun around. Another axe spot blow hit the edge of King B Powerworks' armour and got through. It's like, it's basically, there was just like about here and the axe went about there. And stuck. Did get really, did uh, manage to free itself. King B Powerworks escaped. We got axed again as time ran out and the judges were called in. But King B Powerworks were trying to get away. The judges ruled in favour of Dominator 2. After failing for qualify to qualify for Series 6 of Robot Wars and not even entering Extreme 2, King B Powerworks returned for Series 7 of Robot Wars, landing in Heat C where it drew fifth seated flipper. Dan Tom Kier and another two flippers in Hassocks, Hog 2 and Drick. Rick also had a little spinny thing at the back. King B Powerworks tried to go after Hassocks, Hog 2, but ended up attacking Rick instead. But after the Dan Tom Kier took out Hassocks, Hog 2, the fifth seeds went after Rick as well. King B Powerworks was uh, Dan Tom Kier's next target. They got flipped, but this was no problem, they were invertible. King B Powerworks did get some hits in, but got hit more by Dan Tom Kier. Dan Tom Kier even wore King B Powerworks as a hat at one point. When Dan Tom Kier got flipped, though, King B Powerworks went after the fifth seat. Both bots were attacking Rick as ra time ran out and the judges ruled in. They ruled in favour of Dan Tom Kier and King B Powerworks. Next up was a vertical spinner IG88. The two bots danced around each other early on before IG88 hit King B Powerworks' side three times, but with gaps between where King B Powerworks got away. After hit three, when King B Powerworks ironically was attacking, King B Powerworks stopped moving, so IG88 hit them some more. King B Powerworks started leaking ominous smoke. Got counted out, shunt axe King B Powerworks, Sergeant Bash grabbed King B Powerworks on the side, blew air for Flipper, and eventually got pitted. Jonathan and the commentator hoped they'd be back, but the team spoke of retiring their bot. But first, there was the All Stars. King B Powerworks got in by, by virtue of making the semi finals in Series 2. King B Powerworks drew Bulldozer Behemoth, Dan Tom Kier, and Cutting Disc Wielder Pussycat, who was 
targeting King Bee Powerworks. Owen oh, Dantonkia had a grudge against uh, King Bee Powerworks for putting holes in Dantonkia. Pussycat hit King Bee Powerworks a lot early on. King Bee Powerworks wasn't actually moving at all well. Meanwhile, Danton Kier flipped Behemoth out of the arena. Danton Kier then flipped King Bee Powerworks out of the arena too. Twelve years later, Series 8 happened and, of course, as we're still talking, Bot didn't retire. Um, an updated version of King Bee Powerworks was entered. Now King Bee Remix. Um, it's still essentially the same bot, but obviously updated for modern times. And no spinner on the back anymore. King Bee Remix landed in Heat C and drew down Tonkier. Some things never change. Axe Spot Glitter Bomb and um, box with little cutting thingy on the back called Overdozer. And when I say on the back, I mean on a stick at the back of the robot. Apparently, King Bee Remix could understand Japanese. Okay. King Bee Remix went for Overdozer early on, pushing Overdozer around and taking them out actually. King Bee Remix then went after Glitter Bomb, prodding and poking the Axe Spot. They also poked Dan Tom Kier as well. Then Dan Tom Kier flipped Glitter Bomb and Overdozer, so King Bee Remix went through to the round robin stages with Dan Tom Kier. And it was Dan Tom Kier who was King Bee Remix's first opponent. And it turned out that um, King Bee Remix had put holes in Dan Tonk here. Again, some things never change. Also, someone had signed Dan Tonk here. From, someone from the King Bee Remix's team had signed Dan Tonk here. Also went looking. King Bee Remix hit Danton Kier early on three times before Danton Kier got caught on an arena spike. One flip later, King Bee Remix was trapped between the wall and the pit release. It's a case of went after Danton Kier at the wrong angle and got flipped. So Matilda removed King Bee Remix from the arena. It also turned out that King Bee Remix had snapped a drive chain. Oops. Next up was Vertical Spinner Big Nipper. King Bee Remix opened the pit and went after Big Nipper. King Big Nipper got stuck on a spike, so King Bee Remix tried to put pit or pit Big Nipper, but didn't quite make it to the pit. After a brief chase and a pushing wall. King Bee Remix got hit by Big Nipper and was taken out when the East Link fell out. So, with little chance to get through, King Bee Remix faced Flipper TR2. King Bee Remix went after TR2 early on, but TR2 flipped King Bee Remix until it ended up with Secure Lot. TR2 left to open the pit. Secure Lot picked up, roasted, and dropped King Bee Remix. TR2 sent Re King Bee Remix into the pit. With no points, King Bee Remix were out and never actually returned to Robot Wars. But they still fight on the live circuit. Oh, with a new robot, well, an updated, uh, which is very much still the same bot design wise, but it's. It's still a different bot, build-wise. Um, with King B20, the name to reflect it, the 20th anniversary of the original robot being made. 
King Bookerson did pretty well in its debut series, but it it had reliability issues, particularly with the fire. And Tornado did everything King Bookerson did better, especially the right reliability. I don't recall a fight in which Tornado caught fire. I enjoy watching King Buxton though. There's some. I think because they had the interesting rivalry with 101, they managed to team up despite being rivals. I mean, can you imagine Razor and Tornado doing tag team? No. Can you imagine Razor doing tag team in the first place? King Buxton could have had a worse heat for Series 8. It didn't have a particularly friendly heat, but it could have been a lot worse. It could have got carbide. I didn't know that King Buxton's name was a magic roundabout reference until doing this episode. And the team do get points for bringing a mirror ball to the pits in Series 8. Don't get to see many of those in the pits. So, who's next? Taiki, please be kind. Pretty, pretty, please. Gemini. Until next week, Carlson244, out.